Hey everyone, welcome back. So recently, I discovered the only way to manipulate how huge fungus generate is unlike overworld trees such as oak, you can't prevent certain sizes from growing or coerce a large one to generate instead. No matter what you try, the only way you can prevent a huge fungus from growing is by placing blocks everywhere where it can generate to obstruct it, which isn't that practical or useful. But what if I was to say that there was a way to generate 100% of a section of a nether tree and obtain more warp blocks for essentially no extra effort? Well, what should I grow these two fungus? One with warp blocks at layer 0 and one without. So it seems like somehow these warp blocks guarantee the growth of these bottom three layers of the hat of the tree. You see, this little mechanic here is something that I didn't cover in my original explanation of how huge fungi grow, as I didn't even know it existed. Basically, these bottom three layers of the hat of the huge fungus are called the vines region. And just like the rest of the tree, they generate from bottom to top. The way warp blocks form here is interesting. First, there's a simple 1 in 11 chance of it just generating. And then the game checks to see if there's a warp block already beneath it. And if so, it will always generate a warp block above that one. This is to prevent the game from generating any floating blocks, as if a vine generates on the bottom layer, then it's guaranteed that it will generate warps on the following two layers. So we can actually manipulate this process by placing a warp block below every block at layer 0, to trick the game into thinking it's just generating a nice vines region without any holes in it. Employing this new exploit into the Troomlight farm boosted the rates of the warp blocks from 260,000 an hour to 295,000 an hour, which is pretty crazy. But I'll be lying to you if those additional 35,000 warts just came from this one change alone. In fact, this next change took me a full day to implement as it required redoing the timing for all of these piston columns you see here. Basically, there was this issue where the corner would not extract Troomlight sufficiently if a warp block generated in this corner here, as it would jam the system. But with a little bit of zero ticking, the system can now process two blocks at once, which jumps the rates of both shroom lights and warp blocks by 7% or so. What's hilarious though is that all the extra warp blocks farming was futile, simply because I didn't originally put down enough hoppers to compost all the bone meal. In fact, 45,000 warp blocks an hour were getting tossed into this cactus here instead of recirculating as bone meal. So after fixing all that, the farm now makes 300,000 warp blocks an hour, which is enough to produce 90% of the bone meal it consumes. And then the remaining bone meal can be produced with just one to two moss farms. So out of the 40,000 bone meal this farm chews through an hour, you don't have to worry about any of it. But I didn't just improve the rates of this farm. No, I also added even more safety features, such as this anti-spam on-off switch, which prevents inputs within 2.5 seconds of each other from being processed. Be aware though that you should still wait at least 5 seconds after the lamp is turned off before switching on the farm, otherwise you will prematurely detonate TNT in the blast chambers which isn't too nice. Another cool safety feature is a simple blast chamber observation system, where essentially before turning on the farm, the player comes over to this door to check if there's any basalt in it, and if so they can climb up onto the roof and drop down into the basalt to remove anything, preventing jams. I made numerous other minor changes to the farm too, to increase simplicity and reliability whilst decreasing lag, so overall it should just be a lot nicer to build and run. Speaking of running the farm, let's show you how it's done. First thing you want to do when you arrive at your farm is check the empty shulkers chest to ensure that it's filled with enough boxes for your AFK session. Then walk up these stairs and select the type of huge fungus you want to harvest. In this case, I'll put it on crimson mode, so I'd need to replace the nalium in the core like this and also change all the warp stems in this item filter to crimson. Once you've selected the mode, check the slim blast chamber indicated by the yellow glass to see if there's any basalt left over in there from a previous AFK session. If so, get up onto the roof with either this handy ladder or by Lutra and hop into the blast chamber through this waterlogged trapdoor. As you descend, you can simply mine out any remaining basalt. Next, you can input any boxes of fungus or bone meal into their respective chests. Finally, hit this lever here to initialize the farm and wait until this indicator light turns on before placing any fungus as it won't grow until the light is on. It is so 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 important that you don't turn the farm back on within 5 seconds of this lamp turning off. Otherwise, there's a pretty high chance that TNT will detonate prematurely in the Jupiter, which isn't pretty. Once you finish farming, just hit this lever and the farm will completely shut off. And that's basically it. Uh, before making this in survival, I highly recommend testing it in creative under the same conditions of your survival world to make sure that it works with your mods and setup. Otherwise, happy farming and please let me know of any issues you come across. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.